I'm developing Tesla's autopilot. That's right. Well, at least I'm going to try. Um, so this video is intended to be a high-level overview of how I plan on accomplishing this. Now, this is a side project I've been working on for a little over a year now, but on and off. Um, so I've, I've already probably got a few hundred hours into this. Um, so some parts of this are developed, some parts are not. But in this video, it's going to be somewhat high level. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I accomplish the things that have already been developed. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges I face moving forward. And the hope is by putting this video out there, it not only keeps me motivated, but I'm hoping some of you can maybe help me out with some of these challenges. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, Tesla's autopilot. Now first up, let's review the plan. The first thing we're gonna go over is lane detection. Then I'm gonna talk about steering and how I plan on accomplishing this. Third thing we're gonna talk about is testing and some of the challenges I face with that. The last thing we're gonna talk about is something experimental that I'm working on using reinforcement learning to try and get the car to be fully autonomous. But we'll get to that later. Now in case you're wondering about the end result, what you're looking at here is footage taken from my Tesla Model 3 of how its autopilot system is able to digi digitally recreate the world around it. And this would be my goal, to basically create some kind of application that I can show it drive around with it and essentially have it recreate the world around it. Now one of the things I'm not going to talk too much about today is how to detect the cars around it. And that's because that's actually one of the aspects of this project that I'm really not too worried about. For that I can use a pre-built model like Inception and that should allow me to easily detect images from within the camera's frames. First up on the list is lane detection. Now this I've already completed so let's dive into how I accomplish this. All right, now what you're looking at here is a video taken from my Model 3's dash cam run through my lane detection algorithm. Now, one thing you might notice is there are different color lanes. That's because I've built redundancy into this process. So you'll see the lane on the left is blue, while the lane on the right is purple. That's because the blue lane is, a, is the more advanced algorithm that can detect curvatures, whereas the purple lanes is run through the process that can only detect straight lines. Now the reason this was done is because it is exceedingly difficult to detect curvatures in lanes um, and it's a lot easier to detect straight lines. Um, so the idea is that if for some reason the lane detection process failed to detect the curved lines, the car could still navigate using just straight lines. It may not be as smooth, but it should still be able to complete the maneuver successfully. Another thing you may have noticed is the red crossbar at the top and that's simply calculating the distance between each lane. Now in this part of the video I'm coming up on an off-ramp and this demonstrates a few different things. One, it demonstrates the ability to detect yellow lanes seen on the left. This footage was also taken at night so it accomplishes being able to detect lanes in the nighttime and it also accomplishes being able to detect curves as this is an off-ramp and there's this pretty sharp curvature to this lane. Now let's talk about how I accomplish this. You may have noticed these um, two additional windows at the bottom below the actual footage with the black and white boxes. Now, what this is doing is a couple of different things. This is showing you what the algorithm sees, what the lane detection software is looking at, okay? And by using various color filters, I'm able to filter out most of the noise, leaving only the lanes. Now, the next thing from there I have to do is detect the lanes. Well, those little white boxes you see, what those do is those show this path that the boxes took in order to find pixels. So what they do is they scan across and sweep across the image until they find a certain number of pixels, and then that is what they consider a lane. What it then does is it averages the area of those pixels, right? So it averages where they are on the screen, and that determines the location of the lanes. Now, some of the other things you might notice on the screen uh, is the writing in green. What that is, is that's showing you the slope of the left and the right lane, and then also the curvature that has been detected by the left and the right lane. Now, the idea here, again, is that the slope, the curvature, and the distance from each lane can be fed to the neural network so that that can then predict the steering angle. So again, the, the job of this lane detection software is to gather these parameters 
so that the car can then determine what the proper steering angle should be to make this maneuver. Now this next video you're looking at here is actually a challenge video from the Udacity self-driving car program. It's like an online self-driving car training program. And as you can see, my lane detection software works rather well even in this video that's meant to be challenging. Now there's a few things in here that are supposed to try to throw the algorithm off. As you can see, there are various shades of concrete. Um, there's yellow and white lanes. Um, then up at the top there, you can see there's like white paint, like a little uh, triangle in the middle of the road. So there's various things they do to try to throw, to try to throw off your, uh, your lane detection software because it's meant to be challenging. So this is, um, this is, I think these are pretty good results. And I'm satisfied with where the lane detection software is at this moment. All right, up next is steering. Now, as I mentioned before, to accomplish steering, I'm using a neural network. And this is also completed, mostly. But more on that later. So let's take a look at where we are when it comes to steering. Now, what you're looking at here is the actual training of the neural network using TensorFlow. Now to train this neural network, I'm using things like slope, curvature, distance from the lanes, and I'm feeding that to the neural network to, in order to predict the proper steering angle. However, this requires a data set. So one of the things you might be wondering is, how am I getting this data to train this neural network? I mean, it's not like I have an actual car that I can use to collect this data to train it on how to predict steering angles, right? Well, if you do a Google search for the Udacity self-driving car program, you can find a simulator that you can download for free that runs on Windows or Linux um, where you can use this simulator to get training data. Now, it's not without its challenges. Some of the challenges I'm facing is that are the color differences. So I have to have two con different configurations based on whether I'm training from real footage from my Tesla Model 3 or whether I'm training based on the simulator. And that's because the simulator is more like a video game and the colors are very vivid and very different. And the same configuration won't work for real life and the simulator. So I have to have two different configurations. Some of the other challenges I'm facing is that the simulator is not really very realistic. Um, you're looking at an example um, from the simulator here of me tr attempting to train the lanes and as you can see the car is kind of all over the place. It's there. Are, the inclines are very unrealistic. A lot of times, the car is like pitched at a 45 degree angle, looking at the sky. So those are some of the challenges. Whereas in real life, that would just never be the case. So even while using the simulator, I can train the neural network to predict steering angles. I'm still going to need a method to test it, and I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. Now that leads us into our next topic on the agenda: testing. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using a free simulator, uh, and what you're looking at here is an example of me driving the car around the track um, in training mode. And what this will do is this will record your driving, and then when you're done, it'll create training data. Now, that training data is basically just a bunch of images, right? It saves basically every single frame to an image file. And then it'll write out a log file that you can then read from to kind of replay um, the driving experience. And that log file will basically have the path to all the images, as well as the steering angle, the throttle, um, et cetera, a bunch of other uh, data points. Um, and what you're looking at here is actually me replaying that. And what I'm doing is while I'm replaying from that uh, capture log, I'm also overlaying my lane detection software on top of that to capture even more data points to use to train my neural network. But one of the key things I'm missing is once that neural network is trained, how do I test it? I can't quite figure out, there's a way to do it with the simulator to run it in autonomous mode, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. That brings us to our final topic, full autonomy. And this is somewhat experimental. As I mentioned before, I'm experimenting using reinforcement learning to try to train the car to really learn how to drive itself fully autonomously. At least try to get it to drive around the simulator track by itself. And what you're looking at here is an example of me training that reinforcement learning algorithm uh, to try and learn how to drive the car. Uh, as you can see, it does need some work. 
you know, but the idea with reinforcement learning is that it tries things over and over again until it gets it right. And basically, you give the algorithm either positive rewards or negative rewards, right? So driving in between the lanes would be a positive reward. However, driving off a cliff into a ravine would be a negative reward. Very negative. Very, very negative. Now, some of the challenges I'm facing is just pure horsepower. I have a decent GPU, but nothing spectacular, and it just takes, and I'm limited in what I can do. And what you're looking at is the car trying to drive itself after training for just maybe six, seven, eight hours, something like that. Um, and it just it just needs a lot of time to train. And it really, it while it's training, I can't do anything else on my computer. And the other thing is, reinforcement learning, you have to kind of program in the environment, right? So I have to tell it, okay, steering between the lanes is a plus one reward, uh, going off the road is a minus one reward, right? I've got to build all that code myself. And it's a lot of work. Um, so I already have it working and I can train it. But I, but like I said, I'm limited in horsepower and I, I don't want to free, I, I need to use my computer. So I can't, I can't afford to have it running this algorithm for like a week straight. I just can't do it. So this is more experimental. Um, I would be happy if I can just get the car to drop, to learn to drive in between the lanes and maybe around the track. Um, so that's kind of my goal there. But I, you know, this is kind of like I said, more experimental. Um, my my goal is really to just get the lane detection and the steering down pat um, because you know that that's really the goal of this. Uh, but the reinforcement learning, I'm, it's something that I'm very interested in. Um, and as you can see, you can, you're watching, the, this is all custom code that I wrote to learn to detect when the car is moving. Um, because if the car is stuck, obviously I need to reset the simulator. So I wrote all that code in. I wrote a custom routine to, to be able to detect when the car is moving. And if the car stays static for too long, then the algorithm resets and it trains all over again. And this will just keep looping around and around. Uh, the most I've ever trained is maybe for like 11 hours straight. And you can start to see it does start to get some idea, but the problem is that the best I've been able to do is the car will pretty much just drive in circles. Um, so I because and I know why it's doing that. It's doing that because I've detected, I've built in obviously lane detection. Um, I've built in routines to make sure the car is moving. It gets positive rewards for that. I've built in a routine to determine to be able to detect if it's on the stays on the road. So, but you can tell sometimes the car just thinks, oh, okay, well, if I drive in circles, technically I'm on the road. Every now and then I'll detect a lane. I'm not going off a cliff, uh, and I'm still moving. So, you know, it doesn't quite get the idea of following a path yet. So we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll do some more training on it, um, and I'll, I'll provide updates um, if, I, if there are any breakthroughs. But, yeah, so that's, that's where that's at so far. But like I said, that's purely experimental. So that's my uh, Tesla autopilot project. Um, some next steps for me is I got to figure out how I'm going to test my steering algorithm that I've trained. Um, and we'll see where this reinforcement learning thing goes. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.